Ever since Streets came out, one of the biggest questions has been how to make this map run well, or at least passably, and after spending a bunch of time trying this and tweaking that, I finally discovered the main root of my problems as an NVIDIA GPU user, VRAM. In this video, we're going to be looking at Streets performance specifically, because if you can run Streets, you can run all of the other maps no problem, although you might have to sacrifice some visual quality to do so if you don't want to be changing settings all the time. Now, performance in Tarkov is difficult to troubleshoot for most people, because the game is not that well optimised, which can make it hard to see exactly what the problem is. RAM is probably the easiest, as well as being extremely important, as many maps, but especially streets, will fill your memory entirely with 16GB, making 32 basically required to run the game well these days. After this is CPU, which Tarkov also needs in abundance, but this is not all that obvious to most people, because they'll see their CPU sitting at 50% usage and think that it's not a problem. This is the issue with lack of optimization. although the processor is not being fully utilised, often it's as good as Tarkov can do, so an upgrade generally tends to show improvements in FPS. But even after I stepped up to the 5800X3D, the so-called Tarkov CPU, Streets was still running extremely poorly. After much back and forth, it turned out that the reason for this is because the RTX 3070 graphics card that I'm using only has 8GB of VRAM, which is what Tarkov uses to load various graphical assets into memory such as textures inside the GPU itself. It's worth checking how much VRAM your GPU actually has, but these are the settings that I used to fix the problems that I was having and make Streets actually run pretty well given that my hardware really should support the game at a good level. So I do want to look at some of the other settings as well that I use for streets, but first and foremost let's look at these VRAM settings. Now the first one is texture quality. This is really, really important. For me, playing in 1440p with only 8GB of RAM on my actual GPU itself, if I play on medium or high, I end up going over the 8GB limit and it ends up going onto my actual RAM inside my PC, which is slower and less optimal for the GPU to access than if it's within the VRAM on the graphics card itself. So if I keep texture quality on low, and I know some people don't like the way that this looks, you do get used to it, promise me, you do get used to it, it's really not that bad. This actually makes streets way, way, way more playable for me. Then, if you want to combine this with the other setting, which makes the most difference in my opinion, is MIP streaming. What MIP streaming does is it loads in low quality assets when objects are further away, and then it swaps them in when they're high quality. And you can actually even see MIP streaming if you go into your inventory and you look up certain items, you see it's there's a little slow for a second, there's a something that appears like a really low res version of things, and then it swaps in the high res version after a second. And some items in game will look like that. Now there's two options within MIP streaming. One which is the, the buffer size, which is how much RAM is allocated for loading textures, and the other one is the disk usage limit. These two things seem to basically do the same thing. This is about speeding up the loading of textures. It doesn't really seem to make too much difference. I've tried with both. Maybe it's very slightly faster if it's all the way up. You put some more workload on your hard drive if you put these up to full because it's reading out textures off the actual disk more often. But this can also help limit the VRAM because it means that you're not loading high quality textures constantly inside the GPU. So this really does help overall with fixing a lot of the issues on streets. And this is a good benchmark and baseline to start with. If you don't have a VRAM problem, you've got a card with a ton of VRAM, then maybe this isn't as big of a deal for you. But for me, this was a massive deal. And this was basically the baseline at which I could then start actually making streets perform well on my PC. The only other thing that I want to talk about before we jump into the game itself is the game settings. Now, lots of people talk about the automatic RAM cleaner and talk about only use physical cores. I've never really seen any evidence that only use physical cores actually does anything. Some people say it only works for one raid. Some people say you need to go and get process lasso so that you're restricting it to physical cores always because the one in Tarkov doesn't work. I've tried all of these things in the past and they don't really seem to make any consistent difference to me. It's not like I'm getting 10, 20 FPS by using these features. I find it very confusing. Automatic RAM cleaner, I've seen some positive results recently on the changes that were made in 13.1. But again, this doesn't really seem to matter to, too much to me. My RAM never actually fills up with 32 gig. So I don't really have it on. I don't see the point. I've tried it on for a little bit and it only seemed to make things worse. So I just have it off for the time being. As with all these settings, try them out. See if they work for you. Everyone's hardware is different, people are running different processors, different brands of processors, different manufacturers, different graphics cards, it, it's all different and Tarkov is very inconsistent about the way that these things apply so it's never one size fits all and you can never just go through one streamer's settings and have it just be a complete miracle for you. That works for some people but a lot of people it just doesn't work for so you end up having to do a lot of tailoring on your own system which is quite frustrating I will admit. So we've jumped into a street trade offline with no bots. Now this does mean that it's not completely realistic as for an actual real Tarkov raid. But the problem with real Tarkov raids is that it's inconsistent, there's different numbers of PMCs, there's different numbers of scavs, there's different things happening on the map. So it's very difficult to have a consistent set of results in real online Tarkov raids. So you kind of just have to run it a bunch of times and see if it makes a difference. The problem with offline is that 
Sometimes things make a difference in offline when they don't make a difference in online. And I assume that that means that there's certain things that cap your performance in online that aren't present in offline mode, which shows that you can actually reach really high frame rates. Say you can go to 130 without PostFX, but only 100 with PostFX on. Well, in a real raid, it's actually only 70 FPS or something. And it doesn't matter whether PostFX is on or not because that's not the bottleneck, which is really, really strange. So let's go through and have a look at some of these other graphics settings now that we're actually in a raid itself. And we're going to start here with shadows i've not seen any real difference in shadows between being low and ultra not really on fps it doesn't really look that much better either so i've kept it on low just to try and keep the system resources at a minimum object lod quality this does actually have a performance impact and what this does the object lod quality itself this dictates the range at which objects switch over into higher quality assets so if you put it on really really low you can see the trees kind of low quality and they'll switch over into a higher quality asset as you get closer towards them. So this is where you can see it, right? So there, that tree there is currently a low quality tree. And as we move towards it, we will see that it turns into a high quality tree. There, do you see that there? That, sh that shimmer there. It's not really that obvious at the moment. It is then because of the way that the lighting is. But when it's bright daylight, this is actually really obvious. You can see it, it's actually worse when you're moving away in this particular instance. It kind of depends on where you are in Tarkov. So you see there, like that tree is low quality. Now it's a high quality tree. Now, if we boost this up, I'm now having it on here. This is There's a trade-off to be had between having it higher or lower. If you can get away with having it lower and it not be annoying, I find it distracts my eye a lot from searching for PMCs, having trees pop in. So I actually will take a couple of FPS hit for having it a bit higher personally, because I just find it so much more difficult to spot people. Now you can see that this tree is basically high quality the entire time. And even when we move back, it's not fading out. It's now stuck as a high quality tree until much, much further away. I don't actually know exactly what distance it would be now. It's a lot, lot, lot further in terms of, yeah. So you see like that tree's now doing it at three and a half there. This is the distance and it's much, much further. It's much less noticeable than when it's right up next to you. I, I find that anyway. So the next one is the overall visibility. This matters a little bit less in my opinion. This determines whether things actually do just load in or not. You can see certain rocks on shoreline if you have it too low, they just don't appear. And technically you can see PMCs through them. So there can be an advantage, but often you end up shooting at people and there's stuff in the way. I find that really annoying. So I tend to have that somewhere in the center as well. Now the next one is kind of controversial. If you have DLSS off like most people do, the anti-aliasing options you have are just not really very good. TAA high is the best option that you have, and I don't really like TAA. I just don't. It's not really a, an option for anti-aliasing that I like. You get this kind of weird flickering on things like power cables and power lines. I just don't think it really works very well. So ever since that they fixed DLSS, I really enjoy having DLSS on quality. I think that the anti-aliasing, which is taken care of within DLSS by itself, I think it's way better. You don't get anywhere near as much flickering. Grass looks better as well when you're looking. It's actually hard to see on this map so much because of the lighting and because it's just, there's just not that much foliage. But grass doesn't flicker as much with DLSS on. Everything, the picture's just more stable. And now that the scopes are fixed as well, so now we have high quality scopes in DLSS, it's fantastic. And I usually find that DLSS increases my FPS as well ever since moving to 1440p. I used to be on 1080 and it didn't really do that much to me. But now that I'm on 1440p, it's quite a bit better. So you can see we've got it on 98 FPS here. And again, we're in offline, so you know, read into that what you will. But if we save this in, Without DLSS, we're now running at, let's let it stabilize, 82. So this makes 20 FPS difference for me in offline mode, just purely graphically. We'll take it. I actually prefer the way it looks. And genuinely, now that the scope thing is fixed, I don't really see any reason why people would not want to use DLSS. If you haven't tested it for a while, there's a couple of things, like there's a little bit of ghosting on things like lasers, which I don't like so much. You can get a little bit of ghosting on certain reticles at night. Uh, and when it rains, the rain is sort of like, it doesn't come down as firmly. It looks like it's kind of, uh, sh I don't know, shaded. I don't, I don't really know the right word for it, but it's actually just kind of a stylistic thing in some ways. It doesn't necessarily look bad. It just looks slightly different. So I actually have DLSS on all the time. I think it's a really, really good option. If you unfortunately don't have an Nvidia card, then maybe some of these settings aren't for you anyway, but AMD FSR2 is actually pretty good. It seems to perform basically the same as DLSS. And I think the quality is slightly worse, although it's kind of hard to tell. I don't think it's really that bad at all. I honestly think people should be using FSR if they're not using DLSS, if they prefer slightly better aliasing. I think it's just nicer. Now, in some of these other options, we've got HBAO. This is Horizon Based Ambient Inclusion. This is basically shadows around stuff. I have this turned off. Some people have it turned on. It's kind of personal preference. It doesn't really do anything to your FPS. 
but I actually kind of prefer it. Like max performance versus like colored ultra doesn't really seem to make that much difference. But if we just stick this on for a moment, you can see that now the shadows kind of around the edges of things, around the edges of trees and stuff like that. One thing that it does do is that it puts a, an odd like shadow around like your player, around your feet. And I think also if your gun is near stuff, it puts a weird shadow around your gun too. You see this like black shadow? That's HBAO. That's what that does. I don't really like that very much. So I tend to have it off. It just puts a little shadow around everything. It can sometimes look like it's got better depth, but I think it muddies the way that things look and it looks cleaner without having this setting on. So this is why I actually have this off at the moment. I find it easy to spot people without it. Next one, we're going to look at SSR. SSR, I've had lots of people ask me why I like having SSR. If you have SSR off, it's slightly better for performance, but I think the game looks way better with SSR on. And if you're worried about performance, you can just put it on the lowest option. If you turn SSR even onto the lowest mode, do you start getting this kind of stuff inside the puddles, which is really, really nice. I think this just looks so good. It makes the game look awesome. And this is on low, by the way. And because it's in a puddle, it doesn't really matter if the quality is not super high, you know? There's lots of areas that are like this, which have got kind of... Um, the floor's just wet it's not necessarily a puddle specifically and you've got this kind of like little bit of a shadow in there i tried putting it on all the different settings medium didn't seem to have any impact on fps whatsoever and it looks very slightly better it's like slightly better modeling within the, the actual reflection and it didn't really hurt my fps whatsoever i really like ssr i think the game looks amazing having it on and it just feels so much more atmospheric and so much better with it than without it next we're going to be looking at anisotropic filtering I think anybody who has this off is insane. I don't know why anyone would have this off. It really doesn't hurt your frames at all. If you have this off, like surfaces and textures look like absolute garbage at a distance. Like you see these, the surfaces here, if you're like lying down and you're looking at the floor, it just is all just this muddy mess. It looks like we're playing Counter-Strike back in 2004. If you turn an isotropic filtering on per texture, at least on streets for me, this did not change the floor texture. I don't really know why. That didn't really seem to fix it. If you then have it on, it then fixes it entirely. And now the textures render properly all over the place, everywhere. No matter whether you're lying down, no matter how far away you're looking, the textures now look good. This actually just looks decent and it really doesn't cost you any frames whatsoever. I have this just firmly on and don't have it on per texture. Make the floor look beautiful. Go on, you're worth it. Right, on to the last couple. So let's go down to sharpness. Sharpness, I have this set to basically zero. Apparently there was a bug at zero, so that's why I have it on 0.1. But the reason why I have this super low is because I have it on in post FX, which we'll look at in a second. If you turn post FX off, I advise probably having sharpness to about 50% or 0.5. Just see what you like. It goes all the way up to three. I think that's probably way too much. I think most people tend to have it around 0.5 up to one or something, depending on how sharp you like your image to be. But I've got this off because I've got it on in post effects, which we'll look at. And then we already talked about MIP streaming and then all of this stuff, this just takes FPS away. It doesn't really do anything. So I've got these all off. Now let's go to post effects. Post effects is a very interesting one because you can actually visualize this and look at it on and off. And you can look at the FPS in real time, which is actually really cool. I love post effects. Some people really don't like post effects, but I absolutely love it. Let's turn post effects off for a second and just see what it does. So we've gone from 105 frames to 116 frames. 118 frames. So it's about 10 frames, something like that, maybe a bit more. Now, depending on where you stand on the map, I've had it change me up to about 30 frames, having it on versus off. But in raid, I actually tested it in a real live raid and it didn't make any difference at all, having post effects on or off on streets. I don't really know why, it just doesn't seem to make an actual difference when there's bots and all sorts of other stuff. But you can see the difference with it off versus with it on. When I was testing this previously, there's basically two culprits to the FPS changes. Number one is clarity. If you turn clarity all the way down, you can see the FPS jumps by about, I don't know, five frames or something, maybe a bit more. And if you turn it all the way up, it goes down completely. But the problem is, I love clarity. I think clarity is really good. It's kind of like increasing the contrast and decreasing the fog on all of the maps. So I really like having clarity at 100. The other one is Adaptive Sharpen. I don't know why Adaptive Sharpen also hurts your FPS. If you turn this all the way down, you get a little boost, maybe three, four. Oh, it's kind of, kind of another, yeah, it's like another five, six FPS. It depends on where you are on the map. But turning this on in any particular way decreases FPS. You could even just have it at one. Clarity seems to matter, graduated, as to like how much it's on, as to how much it affects your FPS. Adaptive Sharpen is just kind of on or off. I normally have this about 30. And so between these two things, the game looks like really, really super clear. I have Luma Sharpen on as well because when it's completely at zero, I find things are a little blurry. 
And when it's at full, it's like way too sharp. So I find 40 is like a nice middle ground. I don't really mess with colorfulness, saturation, and brightness, to be honest. And I don't really bother with these color grading things either. I know some people do this night stuff where they put it on feather and they make it black and white. I can't really be bothered with that. I want one size fits all settings that I don't have to mess with. So this is what I use for post effects. If you're not using post effects, as I said, if you turn this off because you think it hits your performance or whatever, then I advise fiddling with the sharpness just to adjust that. Because otherwise I find the game's just like way too blurry. So the only last thing that I would like to say about the various settings that I've been fiddling around with is about screen modes and stuff like this. Typically, the general consensus is to put all games into full screen mode. But the problem is, is these days, Windows has all sorts of weird optimizations that it does to make sure that you can actually alt tab out rather than it feeling like we're back in the 2000s. The thing about full screen is you can turn off these full screen optimizations and I'm still testing the benefits of it. But Windows has this kind of interface layer, which it utilizes between the game and you know whatever else is, is going on and that allows you to basically be in windowed mode. It seems to me that being in full screen reduces the performance impact of this Windows intermediary layer versus being in borderless or windowed. If your GPU is not running anywhere near 100%, this isn't actually going to make any difference and your FPS will stay the same, but your GPU usage will go up. I've had different tests. Some of those have been a little bit contradictory, but on the whole, that seems to be the behavior that I have experienced so far. Full screen will give you very similar to your borderless FPS, unless your GPU is nearing 100%, because borderless will use more GPU in general, because there's a Windows application layer in the middle that's managing the borderless mode and allowing you to alt tab and all that kind of stuff. If you turn off the full screen optimizations by Right clicking on the escape from Tarkov EXC and turning them off in the compatibility settings. This should remove all of this like Windows gubbins and allow you to use full screen perfectly without having to have all of these other funny application layers in the way, calculating stuff to make the borderless full screen work in a nice way. Now, it's very difficult to consistently test this. It does also make your alt tabbing really awkward. So if you're having to alt tab out of the game all the time, then it's much easier to have it on borderless. But your GPU usage may well jump. I find my GPU usage jumps when I press the start bar while I'm playing in Tarkov if I have borderless on. It's very, very weird, but I think it's because it's trying to render the game and then also parts of the desktop and stuff, and it's trying to like blend them together, right? And Windows is doing magical tricks in the background to make it feel more seamless than it used to in the past. But I've got all this turned off now and I've got it in exclusive full screen. So it is actually proper, proper full screen once you've removed those full screen optimizations in the settings. There were two other things to try as well, which I fiddled around with, but again, didn't come to any conclusive agreement with or not. There's a desktop windows manager in the processes, which is the one that is responsible for doing this full screen and borderless thing. This normally starts with an above average priority for CPU. If you change this to normal, some people have found that that's really helped with stuttering and things in their game. Your mileage may vary, it seemed to help me, and then it didn't seem to help me in different scenarios, so I'm not 100% sure. The other one was hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Some people swear by having this on, some people swear by having this off. I had it on, but it was causing me issues on Windows 10 with OBS, so I actually ended up having to turn it off. Hardware accelerated GPU scheduling actually ended up giving me more frames in Tarkov when I was running it by myself, but because I'm always streaming the game or recording the game, I had to have it off because otherwise OBS would crash. So you might be able to get some more FPS by having hardware accelerated GPU scheduling on, and I do understand or believe that in Windows 11, it seems to work a bit better than it does in Windows 10. But you know, I'm reluctant to upgrade because it's working and I don't wanna break it. So hopefully this helped you to understand a bit better about why I use what and helps you to make some more informed decisions yourself too about the best settings for your system. So next up, go and check out my video about the 5800X3D if you're interested about that CPU and why it's so good. Otherwise, as usual, a big shout out to all my patrons. Hit all the buttons if you enjoyed the video. And as always, have fun in your raids. Thank <laughs> you.